y'all. Time for a quick little recap as I uh, head into my mid-season break here. I got home around 1 a.m. last night and thought I would try to put this together quick and get some work done today before heading uh, off and shutting, shutting uh, training down for a few days and just kind of enjoying a little bit of a break from triathlon uh, before building up for the second half of the season. Obviously, uh, there's not a lot to be happy about, about the, the last trip that I had. Um, yeah, it was a tough trip. Uh, neither race that I did went well. Um, obviously, there was some major issues in Hamburg, and we can, uh, I guess, start there. And first off, um, my heart goes out to everybody involved with the accident there. Um, as pros, we've been asking race in, race out, how we can make sure that um, the media motos are not affecting the race, both from a safety standpoint and from a, uh, a, a fairness or performance standpoint. Obviously, when we're talking about it in uh, the pro meetings, we're always asking, you know, it's always the, the second pass pack swimmers asking for uh, the motos to be well off the front and, and few motos to uh, keep it so the, the front group isn't getting a free ride. And that's always uh, uh, out of the fairness aspect. But then something like what happened in Hamburg um, obviously brings the safety of it, you know, even more into the foremost. And you know, safety has to be the number one priority. And it's pretty evident that that situation just was not safe. 18 motos for nine riders is not acceptable. Um I do want to be uh, clear that I don't believe this is just an Ironman issue. Uh, a very similar situation at in Slovakia. Um, there wasn't a, a oncoming cyclists for all of the course, so I guess that's a little bit different um, from a safety aspect. But uh, from a, just the number of motos there, uh, there were quite a few there. Challenge Rote has had the same issues. They've actually made a dedicated decision even before this happened to pull that back this year, um, which is, you know, part of the conversation that we need to keep pushing forward. Um, but yeah, this was a devastating experience. I don't know what the right answer was, uh, to be completely honest, um, you know, for what they should have done during the event. Um, you know, everybody can sit back and armchair quarterback what they think should have been done. They're making live decisions on the fly with, with no real precedent for that specific issue. Um, obviously there's been fatalities in races before, but not, uh, like this one. And so, yeah, I don't know what the right answer is. I'm not going to sit here and say, this is what they should have been doing. This is, you know, what they should have done on the day. That's a mute point right now. All we can do is say what needs to be done moving forward. And that's, you know, just, you know, we need to put, safety and fairness first and foremost and um you know so hopefully this is you know an unfortunate situation that will kickstart those safety initiatives that we need to have happen on to myself or you know, my race specifically i was pretty happy with the swim uh you know sub 50 swim came out you know in the you know 11th or 12th maybe with um you know ten, uh, nine or ten riders packed up in the in the front and um you know as we got to the first out and back and seeing all those motos it was very evident that there was nothing that we could do to catch them and you know that's you know, not the first time that's happened it's you know you've got to be a front pack swimmer to um perform on on those types of of races and and um you know so that's something just to continue to work on and you know i'm you know the second pack got really really big and it was not a fun experience to be a part of in any way. I was riding at the front of that group for the the first lap and they obviously pulled a lot of the motos off for the second lap after the issue happened and it, it turned into, you know, a, there was so much traffic and it got very, very compressed together where there was, you know, it, it was impossible to ride it fairly there's definitely people taking advantage of that knowing that there was no motos there but um you know getting slot in on you know i got moved from the front to the back you know in a matter of minutes just by trying to hold what i thought was probably even you know 10 to 12 versus just a, a, a straight 12 
and just getting slot in on time and time again. And, and, um, you know, it, it was just an unfortunate circumstance and, and, um, yeah, part of it. But, you know, at that point it was just manage the, the ride, get through safely and, um, you know, do, do the best I could overall, it, it was still the best power I've held in, in an Ironman race. And, you know, I did a lot of work early on and, um, obviously had to do a lot of big surges riding in, in a, a big group like that. So that keeps the normalized power up a little bit as well. Um, but, um, so, you know, good swim overall, uh, decent power on the bike. It's hard to know performance wise. And, and when you're in a group with 30 guys, what's going, you know, it, it just, it wasn't a fun, fun ride by any means to be a part of. And then onto the run, I felt great getting off and then no idea really what happened at all. I was running well within myself. My heart rate never spiked. It was like 20 beats lower than it, you know, has been at many points in the race. And then I just got extremely dizzy all of a sudden and had to, um, you know, I stopped for a few minutes in an aid station, tried to collect myself and, you know, took in some nutrition, tried to figure out what it was and got going again and was able to run another 5k. And then it came back and hit hard. And then I, I started, um, walking a little bit and then just started shivering, shivering uncontrollably and um, was basically having to hold on to the railing just to walk back um, to the end of the lap. And so it was just, it wasn't safe to continue on. Uh, very frustrating. I think that's probably the first time I've ever pulled out of a race that I wasn't, uh, you know, I, I, I pulled out without crashing essentially. And um, yeah, it, it's not how I wanted that to go. Um, I had just run up into eighth and I could see sixth and seventh up the road. And, you know, that's probably where I could have been given uh, how everything played out on the day, which, you know, I would have been all right with. I, it would have been a decent run. It would have, you know, and it just, yeah, things went south. I, I have no idea what caused it, to be honest. It wasn't, you know, I, I went into medical and had blood sugar checked, blood pressure checked, you know, blood sugar was actually pretty high. So I was doing well on the nutrition front. Blood pressure was really low. Um, and, you know, so there's something there, but uh, I'm going to try to figure that out here over the, over the break and, and uh, meet with a few people uh, because that, yeah, wasn't, wasn't a fun situation. It's pretty scary how quickly it came up on me. It wasn't a heat related issue. It was quite cold. I was shivering like crazy. So that, you know, that wasn't it. So, um, you know, and, you know, that was the end of that race. Obviously, Slovakia, I missed the front pack. I held uh, 4.8 watts per kilo for the first 45 minutes. And, you know, then I was down to 4.65 for the next 15 minutes and uh, got to the out and back where I saw the group and I lost seven minutes at that, you know, power to the group working alone because like I, I missed a, a, the big swim group. And uh, so, yeah, the day was over, you know, in the first 500 meters of the swim, unfortunately, on that one as well. So uh, from a racing perspective, not a lot of positives to take out. I did, you know, focusing on what good, you know, I had good power in Hamburg and then I, I had, a, I'm really happy with how the swim went. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to focus on a few, few positives as, you know, that, that was a, an expensive and, and a painful few, few weeks uh, from a result standpoint, but that's, uh, that's racing. And then in, in between the two, obviously, I spent some time on Nice and the bike course. And, you know, I knew that I'm going to, you know, I was going to have my work cut out for me to have any chance of being in the top, you know, half <laughs> really of the race. Uh, you know, and obviously the goal is always to be at the pointy end at the finish of a world championships. And, uh, you know, with the, the course being as technical as it is, um, it, it's going to take a a great day and a lot of work on the descending side of things for me specifically. So I spent some time there on the course learning, um, learning the course a little bit, but more really just learning, uh, getting a feel for the roads and learning what I need to do and how I can try to replicate those, uh, situations here, uh, in, uh, Colorado from my home base. And, and, uh, the good thing is, is, uh, I've got the terrain here that I need to, to work on it. It just has to be a dedicated effort to, uh, you know, to really focus on 
on that and, you know, not so much working on the engine. Well, obviously you have to have the engine in shape, but I also have to have uh, the technique uh, to to try to just not bleed too much time uh, to the rest of the field on, on that stretch. Everything else about the course is going to suit me quite well. Um, I'm, I, you know, I think the swim is, is going to be just fine. Uh, I spent a lot of time swimming in the sea there and then obviously did, did the run course a number of times and uh, the climb, I, I was, you know, quite happy with how that went. So, um, you know, I learned what I have to, what I needed to learn out of that. And now it's just uh, got to get to work on the second half of the season. I'll, I'll uh, put out another update here shortly on what the season is going to look like if things change or, or what, you know, I'm still planning on being at 70.3 Worlds and Worlds. Um, yeah, we'll just see how everything else went. Obviously, this has not been a fun first half of the year, but, uh, you know, that's, that's racing. And sometimes things happen out of, out, out of your control, like in Texas. And sometimes you just don't race well enough to get the results, um, that you need, like in, uh, Slovakia and in, uh, in Hamburg. So, um, yeah, we've got to got to figure some things out and uh, looking forward to taking a little bit of a break and going and watching my wife and my sister and the rest of the, you know, we've got quite a big group at uh, Des Moines 70.3. So if you're there, make sure you uh, find me and say hi. I'll be there spectating and just uh, enjoying being a fan of the sport and being a coach for, for a week. And then, yeah, we'll be back to work coming, you know, the, the week after. And... Um, I'll also be working this week and next on getting a few of the Ask the Prof videos out. Uh, I've got a few of those lined up that just need to be uh, finalized and polished up. So hopefully we'll get some of those rolling out again here shortly as well. So as always, I appreciate you tuning in and we will see you next time.